Hello everyone, today I would like to share with you the topic of data transfer to ZCB. Let us start first with the importance of data and its migration. When you migrate your system to ZCB, one of the critical parts is to migrate the data. In the future, every company will differentiate itself to the other through technology and the business become more reliant on the data. So you will often hear, every company is data company. NCCP is a platform to enable this. Refer to the use case of helicopter resignation and Terum us in the architect exam. Data migration in the last scale is also one of the critical requirements. Therefore, there will be surely question about data transferring to ZCP in both cloud engineering and architect exam. So for those who are pursuing now the exam, please make sure that you are familiar with this topic. Let us start with the definition of data transfer. It's simply the process of moving data without transforming it. But is this really simple at its sound? The answer is no. The reason being is for the enterprise environment. When we need to deal with the large data set, the transferring in involved in many factors and must be well planned. So for more information about transferring the large data set, you can refer to the document of Google Cloud. Migration to Google Cloud transferring to large, your large data set, it will bring you to this set of documents where all the chapter about system migration and data transfer with large data sets is one of the items. So transferring large data set involves viewing the right team planning early and got it tested before we implement it in the production environment. So let us now review step by step the transfer process. Step one to assembling the team. This is about to set up a team to be in charge of the data transfer with a critical role. For example, enabling the resources needed for the transfer, including human and physical resources, approving the transfer decision and executing the transfer. Step 2 about collecting requirement. For this step, we have to identify the data set that we have need or can move, and then also the destination for the chamfer and the resource associated to that. Step 3 evaluating chamfer option. For this step, we have to understand the factor which would impact um, the option of chamfer that we're going to choose. It could be cost, time, offline various online transfer option and what would be the transfer tool and technology at available at us today and security step four preparing for the transfer so it related to the functional and performance testing to ensure nothing or limited issue going to happen on the real transfer step five ensuring the integrity so Google also recommend uh, that we should enable the versioning and backup on the destination to limit the damage and accidental delete and validate the data before we removing it out of the soft data. So in scope of the exams, they more focus on step three, evaluating the transfer option. It requires to understand all the factor that will impact the transfer method that we're going to choose. So in the rest of the presentation, I will be more focused on these two topics as well as present to you the role of the rule of thumb helping you uh, to do the options faster in the exam. And finally, review together with you some questions we got published in some platform like exam topic. So now let us review the factor for choosing the data transfer method. Number one is the destination. Of course, it could be ZCB, but in more detail, it could be the Google Cloud Storage or BigQuery or anything else. Second, it could be the source of data. The data as of now can be based on on-prem, private data center, or on the other cloud like S3 or Azure. It can also be based on the Google Cloud Storage, but in another bucket, and there will be the requirement to transfer the data from this bucket to the other. 3. Available infrastructure. So when we're talking about the network connectivity between the sort of data and ZCP, there will be four options. Public Internet, VPN, Peering, and Interconnect. 
If you're already aware of the network connectivity option, you might have already understand the difference between these four. So on high level, the VPN and interconnect based on the private connection while public internet and peering based on the public and the bandwidth of the peering inter uh, and interconnect tend to be bigger and better compared to public internet and VPN. So again, the bandwidth is really critical for choosing the data method. This could be one gigabyte per second or 100 megabytes per second. So this is just some example. Four, data volume. What would be the data volume that should be transferred? It could be some gigabyte, which can be considered to be small, and 10 petabyte to 10 petabyte is something already large data. For cost, this referring to the networking cost, in get or e get charges for the data transfer on the network, the storage and the operational cost on cloud storage during and after the data got transferred. The product cost, for example, if you have to rent a transfer appliance, and personnel cost for assembling your team and acquiring the logistical support. Time. How long is allowed to transfer the data. It depends on the business criticality and some policy. It could be one day, one month, or one year for some archived data. I will go to that topic later in detail. 7. Offline and online data method. I also go to that in next slide as well. For tool and technology, so we have now three main options. The Google Cloud Storage Chamfer Tool and one presentative is GS Until. The Chamfer Service Storage is for the data between one bucket to the other between the cloud storage or from cloud, the other cloud to GCP. The storage for on-prem to move the data from on-prem to GCP or Chamfer Service for BigQuery or BigQuery data transfer service is to move the data to BigQuery. And finally, the transfer of Lian. Nice, security. So when we're talking about security, it's about the encryption of data um, before, during, and after um, data got transferred. And it's also about the policy of the company or the requirement to select the private or public connection, where we already mentioned here the four options. For the rest of the video, I would like to focus only on the three topics. Six, about time. Seven, of live errors, online data transfer. Eight, tool and technology. The reason that I only select these three topics is because Either for the rest of the item is related to project management, for example, cost, or is also critical, but I would need to do it in next video, for example, security. Rule of thumb. If the volume is 10 terabyte and the bandwidth is 1 gigabyte per second, it will take about one day to complete the transfer. Um, to be more accurate, it is 1.2 day. However, for the exam, I think one day of the accuracy could be sufficient. So just remember this and you will be able to do further calculation. For example, if I increase the volume of one petabyte, so it like 100 times compare, bigger compared to the first example and keep the same bandwidth, then the duration would be 100 days. Or if I keep the same volume but decrease the bandwidth to 100 megabyte per second, 10 times lower, then the duration would be 10 days as well. So now let us review the set, uh, second topic out of the last three, seven, online chamfer virus of light chamfer. So what is online chamfer? It will be based on the internet connection. It could be public internet, VPN, interconnect or peering with different bandwidth as well at different configuration, whether it's in public or the private connectivity. So the data will be transferred based on that network connectivity until the data completely transferred. For the offline transfer, you will put your data 
in one of the data box like transfer appliance and ship it to Google Cloud, copy it to um, Google Cloud Storage and then you will be finishing the transfer and not depend on any network connectivity like this. So now let us review the transfer tool and technology. There are three options available. Number one, Google Cloud Storage Transfer Tool. It is an online tool which is based on the connectivity of data source to GCP, out of which just until is a best known tool. This is standard tool for small and medium size of transfer, which less than one terabyte. And it will be operated by uploading the data directly to Google Cloud Storage. There are three things that you also should know. It also supports real-time incremental sync just like AirSync. It also supports the multi-threaded transfer by GS until hyphen M to increase the speed of transfer. Lastly, for the large file, you can use the composite transfer. This means that you can break down the large file into the smaller chunk and do the parallel transfer. Combine them in the end of the chamfer to single object. Second option, chamfer service. This also online chamfer based on the network connectivity, but it's different from GS until is that it designed for large scale of chamfer, tetabyte to up to betabyte. You will need to install the agent in data center, and there are three kinds of data chamfer service. Number one, storage transfer service for transferring the data in different buckets in GCP or from different cloud to GCP. Transfer service for on-prem to move data from on-prem to GCP and finally, BigQuery data transfer service to move data to BigQuery. Transfer appliance. This is the offline transfer service. Basically, it's the data box that you can rent from Google. It will support the last scale of data up to petabyte, and it will be the excellent option when you face the issue with the low bandwidth connectivity. What you need to do is just to rent the data box from Google, copy the data to the transfer appliance and ship it back to Google. However, the transfer service is only available in certain countries. Some takeaway before we reviewing some question. Rule of thumb: with the volume of one of ten terabyte and the bandwidth of one gigabyte per second, it will take about one day to complete the chamfer. The comparison between three chamfer options for the Google Cloud Storage Chamfer tool is applied to only less than one terabyte. Chamfer service: terabyte to petabyte, but require high bandwidth. Chamfer appliance: terabyte to petabyte with low bandwidth. For the question review, I take some questions from the exam topic in the professional architect topic 1, question set 1. Refer to the question 68, the requirement of moving 75 terabyte of data from on-prem to ZCP. So here there is nothing about the time and the bandwidth available. So if you refer back to the Take away the GS until will not be designed for 75 terabyte. So the last two options C and D using GS until can be obsolete. Now leaving it only for A and B with the same answer on the on the first phase, use chamfer appliance to chamfer. So that is already correct. Now the second phase, use the chamfer appliance rehydrator to decrypt the data. And the second is to use data prep. Um, for data prep, it's not for decrypt the data, but actually for cleanup. So A is the right answer. Question 114. The requirement is to load 900 terabyte of archive data from on-prem to CCP and 10 terabyte on daily basis. The data analysis will be conducted in GCP as well with the internet connection of 100 megabytes per second. So for both data, do not matter archive data or daily data. With this data byte, you cannot use GS until. For that reason, you can directly obsolete the option A and C where GS until is mentioned. 
Now it levels with only B and D. Uh, the first phase is actually the same. Use transfer appliance for archive date file. So it's already correct. What with the daily um, data now? B. Use dedicated interconnect or direct peering. And D. Use VPN over the public internet. So for the public internet, let us do some quick calculation based on the rule of thumb. If you remember, 10 terabyte, 1 gigabyte per second, it will take one day. So with the same amount of volume, 10 terabyte, and the lower bandwidth, uh, 10, 100 megabyte per second, so 10 times lower, then you will take 10 days to complete the transfer while it's required for daily. So using the public internet and VPN would be obsolete, leaving us only the option for dedicated interconnect and direct peering. Please remember that direct interconnect and direct peering always provide a better bandwidth. I already finished the presentation today about data transfer. I hope that is useful to you. If you like, please subscribe to our channel and share to the other. Thank you very much.